actually grab that book. No! <laughs> I've been reading a book called A Tumultuous Life by Brian Burke, apparently the only autobiography so far about a Western Australian premier. I'm sure that will change once uh, old Mark and Boy retires, and I'm sure he has a lot to talk about. But that's not why I'm here. Brian Burke was a former Premier of Western Australia from way back in the olden times when mullets were cool but unironically. Politics in recent decades has become an affair of many lifeless looking lawyers who try their best to avoid controversy. There is a good reason for that, but it's still hard to see people like Anthony Albanese, our federal opposition, making bland and non-offensive statements when you know he's thinking in his head. Do I want to release this track on that Tory cunt ScoMo? Make bitch lasagna look like baby Legos. There was a time in Australian history when politicians had freedom to not be automatons, and the people who represented us were crazier than a meth head in Melbourne. It's crazy, because why would a meth head be in Melbourne? It's more of a devil's lettuce kind of city. When Western Australia was under the Tonkin Labor government, yes, I am talking about a government so old that one of Perth's major highways are named after its leader, there was one particular man that was so incredible to me that I wanted to make this quick little video about him even before finishing the book. So there may even be more to say about him. This man is Ken Killer McKiver. Killer McKiver has been a train driver and was the Labour member for Northern during the Tonkins government. Why was he called Killer? You might be thinking he was a big brute of a man, someone who looked like Tony Gillard. But in reality, his physique was closer to his supermodel son. That was because he was a ruthless politician. The shark-like destruction of Tony Abbott mixed with the sharp shrapnel tongue of Kate. But again, you're wrong. According to the author of A Tumultuous Life, Brian Burke, it was hard to imagine anyone less threatening than Killer McKibber. Killer McKibber got his name when he accidentally drove a 2DA train right into a multi-thousand dollar bull. Back when a thousand dollars would probably buy you the entirety of the state of Tasmania with a little bit of money left over. When the owner of the bull's housekeeper came to assess the damage, they looked at the probably demolished bull carcass and asked Ken, Do you think they'll let us use it in the kitchen? After one close election in Western Australia, when McKibber won his electorate but the state government lost, Killer seemed overjoyed, having quote, a spring in his step. If your party loses a government, you are usually not a very happy man. Why was this man so happy? Well, according to Ken, he doubled his vote in the area of Valley Valley. Where is Bally Bally? Well, I don't know. But all that needs to be said was that 55 votes there were made and two of them were for Labour. He was happy because he went from having one vote to having two votes in Bally Bally. Now, Killer McKibber, like any member of his party, wanted to give off a good impression to the leader of the party, WA Premier John Tolkien. For the first couple of months, he went fine. Then, as was the going of the time, old mate Kenny Boy got gout. He spent the first day of gout whimpering in the corner of the chamber and in agony, shoes off, trying desperately in vain to position himself in some way comfortable. Day two went worse, as while still in goutly pain, he limbed lamely to the toilets, where he saw the Premier of this great state of Western Australia at the urinal. Because I guess no person prior to the 2000s had any social exclusion in public restrooms, Tolkien started up a conversation. Oh, hello King, how are things? Oh, not that good Mr. Tolkien. And then he proceeded to vomit on Tolkien's trousers. That's on my trousers! That's on my trousers! <laughs> Legally the most powerful man in the second largest state on this planet Earth had his trousers vomited on in a public bathroom while his fly was still down. The book leaves me to believe that this was the last friendly interaction with Killer McKibber ever had with the former Western Australian Premier. McKibber became a very effective transport minister. Just don't 
put any balls on the track. Looking at you, T-Bone. Looking at you. This man is a legend. I don't think I'll ever forget. I am simply shocked and appalled that Ken the Giver, the bull killer, has functionally no mention in any form of media I can find beyond a small informational biography on the Western Australian Parliament website. In honour of this marvellous man, I think we should do what I'm pretty sure every druggo has done at least once in their likely short life and vomit on the Tonkin Highway. Just right on that intersection that looks kind of like some trousers. Show your patriotism for the characters that shape Western Australia by downing some salt water after a particularly spicy kebab and regurgitating your entire digestive system like a dejected hybrid between a vulture and a sea sponge right on the Tonkin Highway for me. Yeah.